Welcome to Ask Stago, expert answers to your expert questions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Ask Stago, the podcast from Stago. This platform is dedicated to answer to the question that you may have about our product and hemostasis in general. My name is Cecile Roque, and I'm a product line manager here at Stago. I'm really glad to be the host of this new episode. To animate today's session, I'm not alone because I'm joined by Audrey Carlo, first of all, our scientific marketing manager. Hello. Hello, Audrey. So, Audrey, what is the subject of today's podcast? So we will talk about another very frequent question raised along venous thromboembolism exclusion diagnosis. What cut off to choose for the D-dimer assay used in this context? Ah, thanks, Audrey. And to answer to this question that you may have sent us, uh, we are glad to have a special guest, François de Passe. Hello. <laughs> François, you are our clinical development director and the most knowledgeable among us about this question. Thank so, you. <laughs> <laughs> so let's jump to our first question. To start, what is what we call a common cutoff and what is an age adjust one? Which one is validated today? Ah, this is really an important question. As you know, D dimer is a fibrin specific degradation product. And depending on the epitope recognized by antibody used in the assays, results, results may differ across regions. This means that results may differ depending on the assay used. Consequently, it is important to know the cutoff and the unique to report the results of the particular D-dimer assays that you are using. Most assays are validated and cleared by regulatory agencies for venous thromboembolism exclusion in low to moderate clinical probability patients with a single cutoff, most often 0.5 micrograms per milliliter, fibrinogen equivalent units, FEU, but other thresholds or other units can be used. Yet, it is known that aging is associated with comorbidities and inflammation, a situation in which the dimer levels increase. As a consequence, the specificity of the dimer tests decrease as age increases, translating into more false positive test results in older patients than in younger ones. So, um, if I understand well there, Francois, it means that VTE will be less often excluded in older than in younger patients, and that older patients will need more often additional imaging tests? Yes, that's the point. This is why using an age adjusted cutoff calculated by the formula age of the patient multiplied by 10 in microgram per liter may be of help to avoid too many unnecessary imaging tests and related costs. The drawback may be a potential loss of sensitivity, meaning false negatives, but the risk benefit balance is in favor of applying this age adjusted cutoff, especially for dimerized cells with low specificity. Okay, so uh, for my former uh, job as an application specialist, I always say that we should refer to the cutoff, which is claimed on the product package inserts, if, I, if I'm correct. So um, does it mean that a laboratory that wants to provide results analysis for VTE exclusion using a age adjust cutoff uh, must be validated locally before? Yes, that's the point. That's another important point. And this is not an easy procedure. In contrast, it has been published that age-adjusted cutoff was not necessarily improving the specificity depending on the essays as published by Gilles Pernaud, for example. Okay. Um, a second question now. As some papers and guidelines also refer to pre-test probability edges cutoff. Can you tell us more about it? Yes, these are recent work indeed, suggesting that the D-dimer cutoff could be different for low and moderate pretest probability. So the idea there is the same logic as the age-adjusted cutoff one, meaning that some groups have published about also combination of age-adjusted cutoff and pretest probability adjusted cutoff to achieve the best specificity possible. It means the lowest number of false positive results without losing too much sensitivity and having risk of missed patients. And uh, yeah, again, that's the balance between missing patients and not sending too many patients to imaging in, un unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the European Society for Cardiology, ESC, indicate in their new guideline issued in 2019 that the use of this pretest probability adjusted cutoff for pulmonary embolism exclusion should be considered. However, again, the data supporting these integrations 
seem to have only been generated using one single essay, meaning that this option has to be validated locally if put in place. Okay, really interesting. So let's go for our last question. Are there any other cutoff for dimer essay uh, for other indication maybe? Yes, indeed, the dimer can have many different indications. It has been reported useful in the disseminated intravascular coagulation scoring assessment of the International Society on Thrombosis and Hemostasis, ISTH. Besides, since the work presented by Polarity in 2007, many physicians use the cutoff also to establish if their patient is at risk of VTE recurrence after a first idiopathic VTE event when anticoagulation is discontinued. Ah, uh, yes, to avoid them keeping the patient under anticoagulant unnecessarily and then exposing to intracranial hemorrhage risks, but also avoid the recurrence and keep anticoagulation when needed. Exactly. Such strategies may have enabled to reduce the yearly VTE recurrence risk from 10 to 5% or so, which is a great improvement for health too. But, but I imagine this is not really validated for any dilemma, I say. No, this is not from a regulatory standpoint. This is why, for now, this off-label use is not advertised by any manufacturer while many physicians use it. Okay, and are there other applications for Didymer? Yes, few. Didymer was very often mentioned since January this year, as it appeared to be useful to stratify the severity of infection and mortality risk in COVID-19 patients. The higher the dimer level, the higher the mortality risk. Some thresholds have been suggested to define anticoagulation strategies or to exclude VT in COVID-19 severe patients. But again, these were derived from the use of different dimer assays. Okay, and there we come back to your first statement. There is not one dimer assay, but several, and you have to keep um, caution on what assay you are using and where you validate it, uh, meaning there is not one parameter and the brand matters on your dimer assay. Well, thank mm -hmm. you, Francois, for your explanations. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And please send us your questions to ask at stago.com. And see you later. Bye-bye. See you. This podcast is brought to you by Stago. Diagnostics is in our blood.